We've got a picture that's coming together of the Bible as God's inspired word about his son, Jesus Christ, that's been breathed out by his spirit so that it comes to us today fresh, relevant and contemporary. It is living and active. And because this word in the Bible has been spoken out by God, we should expect it therefore to be authoritative in our lives. Now, what do I mean by authoritative? Well, I guess I mean two things. First of all, that we can trust it. After all, the author of this book is the author of everything. So we would expect him to have authority such that we can trust him when he speaks. But secondly, I mean it's authoritative in that we should obey it. And that's the Bible's expectation time and again that God's people will be people who obey this book and live in obedience to it. So Psalm 1, for example, starts like this. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of the wicked, does not stand in the path of sinners, does not sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. It's a wonderful picture of someone living under the authority of God's words, despite the voices all around him telling him otherwise and reaping the benefits of it. Now, we in the 21st century have a bit of a problem when it comes to authority. We tend to push against it. So that when someone says to us that we should do something, we tend to reply, well, who says? Well, when we ask that question of the Bible, who says, of course, it comes back with the answer, God says. The God who made everything and who, more than that, loves us such that he sent his son to die for us. That's the God who speaks with authority through his word. But that doesn't stop us nonetheless, often living according to different and competing authorities. The most obvious one that we fall into following, and sometimes without even knowing we're doing it, is our reason, our intellect, our common sense. We look to that as an authority rather than this book. Now, don't hear me wrong, it's really important when it comes to reading the Bible that we use our minds, our intellects, our common sense, our reason. Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7, think on what I say. He's encouraging him to use his mind, to engage his brain when it comes to reading the Bible. We have to, we can't help it. But what do we do when our mind, our reason, clashes with what the Bible has to say? when our common sense or our intuition tells us that we should do something different to what the Bible says or think something different to what the Bible thinks? Or what do we do when our cultural tastes and understandings run counter to what the Bible is saying? Well, in those moments, because God's word is authoritative, we should trust it and live by it. The writer of the Proverbs says this in Proverbs 3 verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Another authority that competes for our allegiance is our experience. Now again, we've got to get it right. Our experience is important. We can only understand the Bible as it comes to us in the world we live in and according to our experience of it. But again, the question is, what do we do when those two things clash? What do we do when my experience or my feelings about something clash with what the Bible has to say? Or when my experience of the world is different to what the Bible says my experience should be? Well, in those moments, because of the nature of this word, I should trust its authority and live in accordance with it. Then, thirdly and finally, there's the possibility that an institution might compete with the Bible as an authority in my life. An institution like, say, the church or the family. Now again, let's get it right. The church and the family are extremely important. In fact, they are gifts from God to help me live in accordance with God's word. It's the family that passes on the teaching of God's word down through the generations. It's the church that teaches me God's word and in which together in community we interpret God's word. But what do we do in those moments where what the family or the church says clashes with what the Bible says? 
Well, in those moments, I need to trust that God's word is authoritative, that I can trust it and that I should live in accordance with it. The Bible is authoritative. It's authoritative because the God who's spoken it out and who speaks through it to me today made everything. But more than that, because that God has given everything for me. You see, the God who speaks this word is not a God who is interested in just lording his authority over me, telling me what to do because he gets kicks from exercising his power in that way. Now, the God who is exercising his authority through this book does so because he loves me. And he's demonstrated that love by sending his son to die on the cross. So that when I understand that, living in accord with the authority of this book, the Bible, stops being a burden and becomes a joy. Mm -hmm.